Welcome back to another episode of Unranked Podcast. We're going to have the usual lineup today, um, touch on um, Michigan to Purdue, that matchup and how that turned out um, this week or last week. And then this week, got a big one, biggest one of the year to this point. Um, got got Rowan to Penn State, um, taking on uh, Penn State, number 10 team in the country. We're going to touch on um, the Lions. And they, you know, they're going out to California to go see the Chargers um, in their matchup this weekend. So, Eli, go ahead and kick it over to you to kind of touch on uh, uh, the Purdue-Michigan game here real quick. Um, but yeah, what were your thoughts? Just kind of like yeah. uh, overall. So, so, I mean, I, I know we said um, – I, what, I, what I'll say about that game is just it is – it wasn't sexy, but we got the job done. Uh, and when you're kind of firing on, on all c- cylinders like we are uh, at this current season, this current moment um, – that's when I, I kind of feel like we kind of look at those games where it was a little sloppy. We we easily could have had probably another 14 points on the board offensively. Uh, we let them move the ball slightly more than we are used to or accustomed to. Mm-hmm. But at, at the end of the day, it was still a massive blowout. We got the job done. There was no life signed from them most of the game. Uh, kind of flat vitals as far as their whole team goes. They, they knew what the situation was. We just – I don't know if we were slightly looking ahead towards this Penn State game, um, slightly um, letting all the outside noise get to us. It was just slightly more sloppy than I would have wanted this game. Mm-hmm. This game. And, but that's coming off the cleanest game we had had all year versus at Michigan State. So I think kind of the yin and the yang of the whole season. But overall, solid dub. Went there, took care – or they came to us. We took care of business um, uh, in a team that I think we, we – we kind of shut the door on. They had no life, but they, there were a couple of things I would like to see clean up uh, just moving forward. Things that you can't do versus Penn State, can't do versus Maryland, can't do versus Ohio. Um, right. That, that we let slide in the, in the, Penn, in the Purdue game. But um, I think there might have been a slightly bit of a looking ahead towards this playoff type atmosphere that starts, kicks off high noon this coming up weekend and proceeds until uh, – you know, as long as we keep going. So, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, no, you hit it right on the head there. And I think, you know, honestly, I'm gonna look. I'm gonna look at this as it's just like a. You know, I think this game, this past game, is kind of like a dress rehearsal, right? You know, come off the bye. You know, um, came in, they started clicking early, and then you know, then things start to kind of like, you know, go awry a little bit. Um, would have definitely liked the run game to get a little bit better, mm-hmm. or be a little, bit, a little bit better. I think Corn only had like 30, 40 yards, like two point nine yards of carry, something like that, but. Um, you know, once again, you know, JJ, like we've kind of shown, I think now we're probably like more like 60, 40 pass. I mean, he threw for like 360 yards, um, was really like airing it out. Probably would have threw for 400 few touchdowns. Um, I think, I mean, what, four or five drop passes? He might have yep. been, you know, like to where he was off or to where, you know, he didn't. Yeah. The one, I'm not going to cut you off, but the one in the end zone, oh, kind, yeah. of, kind of an iffy, kind of an iffy, like it slightly high, I think. Uh, yeah, he jumped too soon. Hands. Yeah, one of those kind of on both sides of the ball, really, as far as quarterback and receiver go. But, no, I agree with you. He just slightly off on a little, couple of those passes. So um, yeah. yeah. But it was nice to, like, you know, you want that against, you know, Purdue. You don't want that right. against, you know, Penn State. You know, you know and, and I think uh, and it was great for him. You know, he's still super efficient, he's, you know, like 65, 66 percent uh, completion, which is still you know pretty impressive. But, but yeah, I mean, I like what the defense did. Kind of sucked watching them steal that little touchdown. Um, you know, at the to end the game, um, gave him a couple big plays. That man, that corner spot, the other side of Will Johnson, it still just kind of looks a little, a little iffy over there. Um, you know, I got like a freshman out there, got Josh Wallace out there. I think he's a little banged up. Um, you know, that's just something you got to kind of figure out and. and you would hope that, you know, they don't have an answer for that um, for this weekend. Yeah. No, I agree. And, and uh, just one of those games you got you got to take roll with it, roll with the punches. And it wasn't an overly sloppy game, just like we are both saying, maybe want to look ahead towards this Penn State game a little bit. And and kind of uh, this, this Penn State game is obviously the biggest game of the year so far. Um, every week is – the ante is going to be upped, uh, especially if we keep winning, um, like I anticipate that we will. But you go ahead and get this one. That's a top 10 victory under your belt. People kind of stop 
uh, on the road, top 10 victory on the road. People can kind of shut up about haven't beat anybody this year. You're mm-hmm. continuing to shut up all the other outside noise. You go and play a very tough uh, Maryland team. And, and then after that, obviously, we all know uh, what's happening versus uh, o- uh, Ohio at the end after Thanksgiving up here. So I just, you know, this Penn State game, I we we have to play a cleaner game. Mm-hmm. And so I guess I'll start out with the, the things that I am slightly concerned about. You just mentioned it, but the run game. Um, I it's been serviceable, but it has right. not been dominating. And um, it's one of those things that if if JJ wasn't playing to the caliber that he is playing, if he had been developed to the where where he is, um, our offense wouldn't be flowing like it is. You know, we had all the quarterbacks that we've had over the past uh, in in Harbaugh's. Uh, uh, air here running quarterback with this run game this bad I'm not I don't know how how dominating we are out there looking. so I, I I believe in JJ and I think he can go out there and win games for us uh it's not one of those things we're winning uh d- um uh, despite of him we're winning because of him in a lot of situations so I do believe in him but also our bread and butter under Jim Harbaugh is we pound the rock um yeah. you know like you sure you need to run the damn ball shirt on right now it's just and I think we have to uh, – not to the detriment of the team. We have to go out and get points. I think you're going to need points to Penn State uh, to win. You're going to need to uh, keep your defense off the field, uh, put them in positions where maybe they're going forward on fourth because we've already – you know, we already got a quick 21 on the board or something along those lines. And uh, – but I think not to the detriment of the team, but we got to establish the run in this game. I think – Corum needs to have, uh, you know, his his builder's cap on, put the Tims on, you know, like he was all t- doing well, whatever he, he had that road green boot commercial about putting his going to work. Um, I, you know, it's one of those type of games where I think uh, the offensive line needs to be firing, creating them holes. He has to continue to uh, to hit the holes hard. And for the love of God, I would love for Diamond Edwards to, to just finally crack one. Um, he he needs yeah. that for his his confidence and that and I I know he has he has some of them in him. So if he I don't know if he's saving them all for the Ohio game again or or whatnot, but we could definitely most certainly use a 50 yard pop this week, a 45 yard pop this week. Um with, with the handful of carries you're getting. You can see last week he wasn't even the second running back to get a carry. Uh, that was Mullins. Mullins came in and got that big yard, uh big rush off the edge. <clears throat> Obviously we're finding other ways to get him involved. JJ hit him on a mismatch linebacker out there. Easily could have been a, a touchdown, but he stepped out in, you know, inside the three or four. But mm-hmm. um, I just want to see that run game get established. So that's one area of concern that I do kind of have. And I think heading in into the mid-November, we got to be able to pound the rock for 180 plus on the ground. Um, mm-hmm. like we have been for the last three seasons. And and I, I do believe in JJ, but I think he shouldn't have to do it. Um, and and we should go out there and establish the run because that's how we impose our will on teams is is just demoralizing them with them runs. So yep. yeah. yeah, no, I, I want to put a devil's advocate here. And I, I'm very concerned about my very concerned about the run game. Good. I think this is like to me. I just feel like it's like having like JJ's being as control as he is. I wouldn't be surprised if he just starts to really like to kind of like put it on his shoulders to a certain extent. Because I don't know, teams just playing us different. You know, they're yeah. just kind of like putting eight nine in the box and just really like making it tough on it. You know what I'm saying? Like even like East Carolina, like there's a lot of games. It was just kind of like surprisingly, but then you know, watching what he was gonna do with what he has done, you know, up to this point in the season. It'll be interesting to see how like things start to kind of roll because I do feel like now this November I do kind of feel like there's going to be like a an urgency there right to like really I, I agree I think we do need 150 180 on the on the ground you know either that's like JJ giving like you know 40 50 the other guy you know what I'm saying like we do need to be able to like run that clock you know get them first downs keep that uh, defense on the sideline keep them right. Um, you know, just because I think they're gonna be the ones to set the tone this week. So, so yeah, I don't know. Like I said, it's kind of a little, little because I just it's 
because it is kind of weird to see. I mean, this is not what we used to at Michigan, you know what I'm saying? Since Henny days, like that was really back when he was kind of slinging it around a little bit, but it is just like wild to kind of seeing JJ just start, we had, you know, now we're just seeing what we knew we was going to see from him where he looks in total control. Um, in that yeah, past and I agree. And maybe that could be, you know, my old school mentality winning. And you win championships by your quarterback you being able to stand back there and toss mm-hmm. it around and you just get the 120 on the ground um, and, and be able to pick up those 31s, goal line touchdowns when you need them with Blake. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and you're scat back with Edwards, and that's kind of yeah. the you know that's kind of how maybe that is what we need to go ahead and win that championship. I don't care how we get it done, right, but yeah. I, I, I think yeah. I think we need to get a run the run game established um, because that's what we're known for. That's the bread and butter, mm-hmm. and I twenty in snow, a hundred in hot. Running that ball works. Oh, it you know, translates. Yeah, yep. it, it translates everywhere. Tran- Ohio State did not know what to do when it was snowing, and they couldn't throw the ball around in their pretty boy offense. And we would just turn around and handed the ball off and gut punched them repetitively. And I, 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 I know that's what we. I, I, and I, I, I just think that's what we need. But outside of that. A tough atmosphere. I mean, you're going down there in Penn State, never an easy place to go play. They got a, a – I think his name is Drew Allen, our quarterback. Watched him play a few times. Uh, quarterback is very solid. Obviously, Penn State always has a couple of pieces around them. They're, they're one of those guys. Um, they, they keep a couple of NFL receivers around. They keep a couple mm-hmm. of NFL defense players around. They seem to have a pretty solid young quarterback now. He's never played anybody like us as far as our defense goes. He didn't look that exceptional versus Ohio State. Ohio State didn't look that exceptional versus them. Um, I, I personally think we are more physical than both of these teams. Yeah. As much speed um, as any of them. Uh, yes. You take away Marvin Harrison, equal talent on uh, as far as weapons goes across the board, and defensive line can't be touched, and it's, I don't think our quarterback can be touched. Um, night and day as far as better. So I think that those are your recipes – uh, to continue to win is it, just, I think you establish the line of scrimmage with the run game and you limit Penn State's plays. You make it awkward for that quarterback. I, I've seen a couple of James Franklin type interviews where he was snapping on reporters about them asking why they don't throw the deep ball. And, you know, think, so I, I think when you start to hear those type, I mean, putting up 12 points for us, Ohio lets you need, lets you know everything you need to know. Ohio State's defense is not that stout this year. And, um, and and twelve points is real pedestrian. Um, mm-hmm. So I, I look at it. Um, I think it's going to be their offense is going to be in that messy type of game. Um, anticipating that we we do what we normally do. Um, it's going to be back on our offense just to to move the chains when we gotta and 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 get the touchdowns, not field goals when we approach the red zone, and, yep. and just really separate ourselves. Um, because those little, you know, it, it, it's 13, you know, it, it's 13 7 going in that half when it could be 21 7 is a, is a night and day difference ball game, second half. Um, and so, you know, I, I think you just got to make sure you get the touchdowns, not field goals, um, and, and make it rough for that quarterback. Put him on his ass a lot. I think, I think yeah. he'll. Yeah, and one yeah. only one pick. I'd love to see that change. Let's go ahead and double that up, and uh, yeah. and make it, and make it difficult for us. Yeah, no, I just, like I said before we got on here, I think the defense. You know, I, I'd like, you know, I hope we, you know, win the toss, get in the ball first, send our guys out there first. Um, you know, I know Harbaugh likes to send the offense out there first, but I said I feel like you know I would love to just be able to see, I you you put who I think like I'm, who I personally think is like the best unit on our team. I think the defense, I think you really got to like rely on them. I mean, not like, it's not like you got to like lean on them to like, you know what I'm saying? But I think they will really be the ones, like I said, you know, might get hit in the mouth. They might get a, you know, field goal touchdown. You know, that first, that first drive is always scripted. It's always tough, but you know, love for them to be able to, you know, handle that, you know, force a three and out, you know, that next drive and really just like give us some time to kind of get up and get things going on the offensive side of the ball. Cause you know, you know, like vice versa, like, 
road game. It's gonna be it's gonna be a tough environment. So I, I'm really looking forward to seeing how they like um, help us, you know, weather that storm. Um, yeah, you, you, you mentioned those scripted plays, and I think you're spot on with that. I think that is is such a pivotal point because if the those scripted plays work, it also gives the the that's kind of those scripted plays are the blueprint kind of for what they want the game plan to look like. And mm-hmm. that offense gets so much momentum and feels good about themselves when they go out there and establish that right off rip. We were right down the field, eight plays, 80 yards, everything worked. And it also kind of reinforces everything. But if you go out there and, hey, we said these fucking hitches are going to work and these ain't working at all. <laughs> this is all yeah. we practiced all week. Um, and, you know, it it quickly, it quickly – they have to throw the kind of throw the game plan away and, and start mm-hmm. start fresh. Especially if you get, let's say start a game out with two, three, three and outs, they they have to throw that game plan out of the window as far oh, as yeah. what they thought was gonna all all week's practice was a waste. Um and, and I, I agree with you. Our defense it, they're obviously stout. Um, but I think we have to go out there and prove it versus a team that's a top ten team. Uh they're no sleepers. Um, easily can go out there and get your ass whooped in this game. And I think mm-hmm. you have to approach it like that and, and come ready to fire out, ready ready uh, to play tough. You know, I, I think we just have to really establish that dominance and try to replicate what we have been doing and try to and, and keep that score in the same ballpark and, and just uh, establish your dominance that, you know, we're here to stay. This ain't no fluke, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and this is the real deal. Yeah, so, I mean, I'm I'm yeah. hyped for this game. I'm so glad it's it's a damn noon game, high noon game. I would be pissed if I had to sit around and wait till seven thirty uh, to watch this game, like Ohio in Penn, Michigan, Michigan <laughs> State yeah. will be at that night. But um, no, I'm glad that we get it out of the way. High noon, whole country watching us, mm-hmm. uh, and you know we're gonna be in that ass by by you know twelve fifteen. So it's gonna be it's gonna be a good. Yeah, night. yeah. No, I uh, that's a segue into a score prediction. Um, so I'll, uh, I'll, I'll I'll kick things off a um, little bit of analysis as well. Um, I think I think we do. I think this is week we do um, establish the run. Um, I think we you know last week was like a nice little like tune up tune up game to get ready for this one. Um, I think we establish the run. I think the defense shows up and I can see us winning. Um, let me see 28-16. Twenty I like that score. I like that score. I, th- I think it'll be in that same ballpark as well, actually. Uh, and I'm kind of in basing that off of the the just kind of my half-ass analysis of where I think that, but I kind of just basing that off of that that Penn State Ohio State game, um, and it just a, a, a nasty twenty to twelve game. Mm-hmm. Um, both teams had some moments where they sputtered. Both teams potential big plays called back. You know, one of those. So I'm, I'm kind of going off that. I think we're we're better defensively than that. And, um, both of them and better offensively than both of them. So I'm kind of based on that, but a uh, very similar score. Um, I, I, I'll go 31, 17. Um, one of those, you know, we, you know, head in the half, you know, maybe a few things we're upset about, but we got the lead and then, you know, we come out second half and, and, and blow and blow the doors off, you know, put the vice grips on and, and you know, do what we do. And so that's kind of what I'm looking forward to. I'm, I'm, I'm actually really hyped for this game. This will be, I mean, the best game of the year that we've had for us. Um, oh, yeah. You know, and, and one of those for all the marble games. You lose this, it's been a fucking waste. Waste of time. All these players should have went pro. When got paid, uh, you know. Proving a lot of, the, a lot of dollars. The, I mean, we didn't want to mention it, but all the noise goes, half of that goes away. I mean, a little bit of jokes come, but half of that goes away because who cares at that point? And mm-hmm. so I think, you know, you, you got to go out there and just – you're playing for your you're playing for your reputation. You're playing for uh your legacy of what Harbaugh's built, what the team has built over the last two or three years. And back to back to back Big Ten championships is uh, a turning of tide. That's that's full domination. The start of this decade has been ours. Um and I, I think the road to that playoff run again officially starts on Saturday down in wherever the hell they play at Penn State. Mm-hmm. What a, um College Station or something, I don't, or no? Happy Valley, Happy Valley, yeah. I think. Happy Valley, that's what it is. Yeah, but no, um, thirty-one seventeenth, I guess. Yeah, big blue dominance. Yeah, no, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm yeah. That give you a little pep talk there. I'm a little hyped up now. 
run, run through the ball off of that. Um, but yeah, no, I think uh, it's gonna be a good game. We're definitely looking forward to you know how we show up and show out for that one. Um, yeah, we can go ahead and uh, move on to the the, the Detroit Lions. Um, fresh off the bye, um, it was it's, yeah, it's kind of tough. You know, Sunday rolled rolled around. Oh, it wasn't too bad. Able to watch the Ravens. You know, they handled Seattle. Yeah. It was not- Kind of funny watching Seattle lose the same way we did <laughs> to the to the Ravens essentially. So didn't feel too bad about that Ravens game after watching that. But but yeah, no, we're uh, back on the schedule. Got a big one we're going out to LA to see uh, the Chargers. Um, so yeah, just want to really just kind of see you know what your thoughts are. Um, able to watch them a little bit on uh, Monday night. Um, but yeah, I'll let you kind of kick things off and just see what you what you uh, think about this game uh, up to this point. <laughs> Yeah, no, so, I mean, like you said, coming off that bye, it's just an interesting I, – I guess I just want to first mention just kind of the status of where we are as a, a fan base, as a team. It, it's uncharted territory. You know, we, we're we sitting there going into the bye, a lot of buzz around the team, uh, a couple good victories under your belt. Uh, you bounce back after getting the brakes beat off of you. Everybody loves to see that. Nobody obviously wants to see your team lose that bad, but just to bounce back, shake it off. Uh, you know, that, that's what you're looking for in your team, really. Mm-hmm. Um, we know you're not going to go out there and win every game. But we also don't want one game to travel into two weeks, one one game to travel into three weeks or, you know, whatnot. And, but, no, I, I would say uh, heading into this one, um, I haven't heard anything. I think Montgomery's still out. Um, obviously, still beat up, spread across on uh, defense, line, a little skimpy, whatnot. But um, none of that has seemed to matter so far. And – and we're doing what we have to do with whoever is showing up. And, and that's crazy because the Lions never do this. But right. but uh, I, I think Gibbs might have got, um, you know, running back one spot for the meantime. Um, I, I, I imagine even when Montgomery comes back, those carries would be a little more evenly split. And because he, he he proves that he's a, he was at every down back. Um, and it just – what all you could do with him. So I'm excited to see him coming off of that week. I'm sure they were cooking up many a different plays for him throughout the uh, bye week. And, and I haven't watched many of the charge, uh, much of the charges this year. Um, what I did do in preparation for this, is just kind of watch a couple, a couple of YouTube highlights uh, as far as the, those little cut up games. And the one thing I would say about him is when you're sitting there at four and four, an okay team, it looks like, but also nothing, you know, none of their wins are worth talking about. Um, and and anytime they've had an opportunity to go and play somebody, a good playoff type team, they lose. Miami, they lost. Um, lost in overtime to Tennessee. That's a nasty loss. Beat the Vikings on – beat the uh, Raiders. Cowboys lost. Kansas City lost. Beat the Bears, Beat Jets, you know, it's one of those like, you know, you're beating who they're beating who they should, but they're not, you know, they're not stepping out of the the norm anyway, and, and, and mess around beating Cowboys or go ahead and stealing one um, down in Kansas City like we did, you know. So there, that leads me to believe that when it comes when push comes to shove, we we're a better, more dominant team, and we know we're proving that we can win um, despite whatever's happening and. Um, so I, I imagine we're gonna. I I, th- I feel pretty good about this one. Honestly. So I think we're gonna go to there. Um, I uh, we're on the road, I believe, right on the road. So, you know, obviously a tough environment. Um, are, are they SoFi Stadium, or that might be the Rams? Yeah. But, 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 I mean, they play the Raiders. It'd be something like the crowd. So I mean, go, we we travel pretty well. So I think. Mm-hmm. Um, that's also kind of something that tends to not play very well in their favor when they're the home team. I think that's just yeah. kind of the epitome of what they've always been. And I don't, I don't mean that like in like a disrespectful way, but like, you know, they're used to be in San Diego. I think they're like sharing a field with like, so uh, they're, they're playing on a soccer field at one point, but I think they were talking about going to uh, LA finally. They've always kind of just been like the redheaded stepchild for some reason, just from like a NFL stand. I don't know. I'm getting a little, disrespect. disrespect, a little disrespectful now, but like it's just kind of like uh, you said, they did good. you know, weird part of just kind of like, an expansion team. Call them an expansion. <laughs> they said, it's hey, it's just, it's just LT left. 
No. Uh, <laughs> no, I agree with you. Though. Um, and and oddly enough, I mean, obviously everybody got roots in Detroit, but Detroit is heavy at every stadium. Um, these fans are coming out of the woodwork. Um, For sure. And, and so that that that'll probably happen again. And but no, I, I mean, very serviceable quarterback. Herbert's one of those guys. Good, not great, in my personal opinion. Uh, but you know, he he can't get you though. Uh, he's big, he's tall, he's a little mobile. Uh, you definitely got to come to play. This team is not. This team easily can't get you. But I I, I just getting to drink the Kool Aid enough, where I think uh, we will come in and just in, in, impose our will the way we do. Um, I think the reporters are always a, a constant mismatch. Uh, regardless of who we're playing, Pete don't know how to defend that uh, that that guy yet. Uh, mm-hmm. So continue to eat. Jamo is going to continue to work in in big spurts and plays. Um, I, I just I like the way the offense is clicking. Um, There's so much and, more there too. It's much more meat on the bone too. And we haven't reached that second where you know we we made it to maybe second year. We ain't got to third year yet though. We, we you know we ain't got Jamo win on a very consistent basis. We ain't been healthy. We haven't had a, a JMO, St. Brown, uh, Laporta, Montgomery, Gibbs, all is one nucleus yet, you know. So that is something as well. We ain't healthy on the defensive line either. Um, you know, Pascal's beat up. Um, you know, um, he wasn't injured, but Bugs missed the first, what, two or three games. So, you know, I just think. We haven't been um, full strength since we won. Nor not yeah. even close to full strength. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I mean, still just kind of like. Teetering, you're getting close there. I think they said like the full 50 man, 53 man roster. Like, I think I think Montgomery good to go. I think he about to be, um, he about to be uh, playing this week. And, and the Chargers, they, what's just also interesting about them is they have so many like stars just on a team. You know, they got like Joey Bosa, Cleo Mack, you know, Derwin James, you know, play safety. Um, Austin uh, Eckler, Her- yeah, Austin Eckler, Herbert, Keenan Allen. And it's weird how they're always just like. Like teetering, you know, you know what I'm saying? It's like I don't know, it's just never. And it might be that coach. It might be that coach, the dude that decides That's to fucking, right. you know, let the computer that let Chat GPT call plays for him. But he, he I don't know, because yeah, because they do. He puts them in tough spots. He'd be going for a fourth down, like in their own territory, and you know, a couple yeah. years back. I, mean, when he, I agree, and they got the first two games they lost by combined five points. So I mean, imagine if you even got one or two dumb, you should have kicked the field goal, but you went for it. That's that's another dub or two right there. You sitting at six and two like us, five and three. He t- um, tied for the conference, yeah. yeah, yeah. So no, I I I, I agree. Uh, a lot of weapons around. They do got, the, and their defense can. Hey, I, I don't know what I. I guess you know to come back to earth a little bit. I also don't want to happen is we we have been winning despite everything. Mm-hmm. And and it all kinds of comes in reverse, you know. Just for some reason, things start to it, internal cracks start to happen. Um, uh, for whether, you know, knock on wood, but that D line is thin. You know, uh, somebody somebody big time. I don't even go say no names goes down. That D line is look real, real pedestrian. I don't know how that look. You know, um, uh, you know, Cam Sutton. You know, like players that are going. On mention that that are dominating. Obviously, you don't want your corner to be mm-hmm. talked about that much because the good things aren't happening at that point in time. But just good, right. solid players that are playing. I hope continue to play at very high levels for us. Um, and you know, I don't as quickly as we turn it around last year, it can go on its head. And um, and, and I just really think you got to go week week to week, week by week. Obviously, mm-hmm. and this is a good another playoff type caliber team that you can go and win before we go on that run of of weaker teams um and a lot of division teams um and you can you got to continue to separate yourself because you know Minnesota had found a way to win a couple of games they're they kind of pop back up I think they're five and three in a wild card mix mix. so you know you gotta and we don't play them to the last two weeks of the year so you gotta you gotta find a way to separate yourself as, as much as possible um, and, and build that buffer uh, for the unknown before you head into because it does a gift and a curse with waiting to play all your division games so late. Um, you know we were able to steal a lot, but also those division games count a little more. And um, and I mean, what do we got? How many? Probably five division games left. Um, so I, yeah. I mean, just a lot. 
a lot of game out there to be played. Um, and yeah, so I don't know. I'm just looking forward to it though. I, I, it's, it's, it's fun. That it's, this Detroit Lion team is fun. And, mm-hmm. and that's, and that's one of the best things you can ask for as a fan. They're winning games and they're fun to watch competitive. Yeah. Yeah. I've just been impressed, like, just how they are on the road. Obviously, before, you know, running into getting hit by that freight train in Baltimore, but, like, you know, Kansas City, you know, Green Bay this year, Green Bay last year, um, you know, we just showed that we just kind of play the style of football that just, tra- you know, travels very well. Um, I think it's going to be getting Montgomery back. This is, like, perfect timing to where you got, you know, Gibbs, you know, finally, you know, had his little coming out party to where now it's like, I think, you know, his confidence is sky high. You got this guy that can get the job done on like, you know, the short, you know, do what he do best. And you already hit on the head though, just with, you know, J-Mo, Gibbs, um, you know, DPJ in the mix, Laporta. I mean, he yeah, is I forgot about that. Really a huge, like the, the best security. Like I didn't think we would get this out of Laporta. He might, he might mess around and get a thousand yards the way yep. he uh, yeah. playing right now. Um, and then you got, and then too, it's just like, you know, I think we were saying, you know, earlier in the season, like protecting the same Brown. It was like, I mean, he messed up his, you know, like he was just getting like 15 targets a game. He's still getting a lot of targets and just really like give him more mo- more room to, you know, do what he does best. So, um, yeah, and I don't know. I hope, you know, I hope to see, you know, golf, you know, back in SoFi. I think, um, I think this probably, might, might be the first time. Did he play when they played the Rams that, that following year? He might have. I think he did. Yeah. Yeah, so I, but I think you know it's a little homecoming. You know, hopefully, chip, chip on his shoulder. Somebody call him a poor man's Matt Ryan. He ain't he ain't like that too much. So, you know, I hope he uh you know he come out there. To and I think he might actually be from too. other than playing out there. I think he might actually be from out there. I think he, he is. Yeah, I think he is. Yeah. yeah, I don't know where exactly, but he definitely is from out there. Um, yeah. No, so no, I'm uh, you know, like I said, I said this a couple of times on here. You know, I'm. One thing about Detroit fans, Detroit people, they if we'll ride with you. And golf, you know, I'm 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 riding with golf now. He he he's getting the job done. He yeah. you know I ain't gonna sit here and say he's Patrick Mahomes, but he for damn straight no scrub. And he yeah. and the things knock on wood for him, obviously anything can happen, but he staying healthy, staying up, keeping the ball and um uh, and, and making timely throws. I mean, that's what else do you want from your quarterback? Uh right. yeah, so I think I mean, you know, go in a playoff game. But other than that, we uh, <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's that's tough for real. Yeah, and we headed in that direction. It's uh, it's crazy to say. Um, I was trying to look up what's Laporta, what's he, what's his projections, but uh, yeah, he projected it right now nine twenty two. He didn't need a big one. He needed to pop off like he need like a six for like one fifteen and a ton just to yeah, you yeah. Know, give him a little. So the average ain't got to be so high going into the the rest of the year, but yeah, no, I think I mean, you know, everybody at that bye week, like branch back healthy. That's somebody he you know he been a little quiet just from coming back off that injury. We just really saw him against like he came back against the Ravens and then had a, had a pretty good game against the Raiders. But yeah, I just uh, I'm with you. I just I just like where we at, and you know I'm gonna be real curious to. I'm looking forward to see how they how they show up. You know, another AFC opponent. They're kind of tend to be the quote unquote tougher conference. So I'd love to just yeah. see how we, you know, how we match up against them. One hundred percent. And they're. Uh, I just realized it's a prime time game. Yeah, the four o'clock. Yeah, we got yeah, Jim Nance and Tony Romo on the call. Yeah. No. So um, no, I agree with you though. Just it, I don't know. It's another opportunity for the team. And uh, and the one thing I will say, I, I was blanking on what I wanted to say, but I, I do want to give a slight shout out, and it, this can change at any point in time. But I want to give a slight shout out to Dan Campbell for, and I'm not saying this funny, but for just staying out of the way. I feel like this year, sure. staying out of the way, and that's what some that's sometimes what good coaches need to do. And not it's kind not of being Brandon Stanley going four on four, right? Not yet, one perfect example. That was you last year. Fourth down, Dan. Cost us games week in and week out. Um, and and then you roll that back strategically and just do it very peppered in from time to time. Um, and and it works. And I think he, he was literally playing like he was on mat for for yeah. and it was like no, like uh-huh. like whatever we did had no consequences. So he even started out this year with that fake punt at Kansas City. 
but it paid off and tremendous dividends since then. Um, but no, so I just want to kind of want to give a shout out to him in general, just for, and I'm not saying this jokingly, whatever, just kind of staying out of the way and letting, letting people cook, letting, um, and letting people do their thing, whether, uh, whether it's the players and how they're going about the thing or the, the, the coordinators and, and just kind of being a good orchestrator of it all. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm not mad at it. I'm not. And, and, um, yeah, he's come a long way. Like, yeah, I yep. think, uh, you know, I think for me, I said, you know, made very clear the jury's still kind of out. You know, we, you know, we've talked about just that Ben Johnson scenario a couple of different times. Um, you know, I think uh, he's really, you know, it, it was so tough because he had the, we had the punter. You know what I'm saying? You have like the defense is playing solid, so it was just kind of like you got to kind of work, you know, with the with the team on this a little bit. He's right. definitely, yeah, you know, done yeah, that. Yeah, hundred percent. No, I agree. And he he's learning on the job. Mm-hmm. And it seems to be fairly seasoned at this point. But like you said, it is kind of the jury is still kind of out because knock on wood for us. I'm not just being honest though. If we fuck around and miss the playoffs, you you probably fired. Um, and uh, especially if it all comes crashing down and you know, like, yeah, we we mess around and lose and yeah, the last week of the year or whatever, yeah, I can see maybe, but um it you gotta the second half of the season here is a make or break as far as you know the the, the season success and whether you get to hang around or not. Um, mm-hmm. because I think they'll they people want to they're gonna need a scapegoat. And and um I think he'll that he he'll be the scapegoat. So sure. yeah. Yeah, you gotta continue to play, and it's on everybody, it's not just him, but it's on everybody. Um, but he's obviously the ringleader. So but no, um, but how confident are you, I guess, on this heading, heading in prime time on the road? Yeah, I feel confident. good. I feel good. Like, you know, coming off the bye, got some good rest. I'm confident that he had them ready. Um, you know, I've been hearing a lot more about how, like, how differently they practice. Like, they have like, a lot more, like, you know, physical practices and like other teams do. And I heard his press conference. That was something he really emphasized, just kind of how they wanted to, you know, attack this week off the bye. Um, you know, if we can, probably just kind of rolling the score predictions and just see, uh, you know, uh, got to go from there with it. Um, yeah. I, mean, I think I can see us, you know, 24, 20, I think we can sneak out with a uh, victory. I think I'll use that score probably two different times. Just, and I feel like we just kind of play a very complimentary game and run that ball, keep the deep, you know, keep that offense and him on the field, off the field, excuse me. Um, you know, get after them. Um, you know, we are on, on the defense side of things, and I think we can sneak out of, sneak out of there um, with the with the tough one. Yeah, no. So you literally stole my score prediction. Um, <laughs> no, I think I, that kind of just rings a bell to me a little bit. I think, um, you know, like midway through our conversation about it, I was starting to really correlate what I wanted to do uh, mm-hmm. or calculate. What, uh, but I, it kind of rings a bell. I think that's kind of one of those good tough nose games. Uh, you know, they're obviously a solid team on the road coming off by um, reintroducing players back into the mm-hmm. offense, getting their feet back wet. Uh, primetime game, all that considered, I, I do think it'll be – right. I think I, I'm going to keep it. I think that 24-20, um, we, we, you know, we skate by, good solid dub, 7-2. and two. I mean, when, when the last time the Lions were 7-2? Like probably 92? So probably 90, 91, yeah. yeah. So, when the last time went to the playoffs and won a game. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, when gas was like 78 cents. But right. we um no, so I feel I feel good about it. And and I think we're we're seeing, like I said, uh, we're gonna eventually talk about it. We've seen the playoff pitcher begin to kind of take his infancy stages. And um and this is like you said, another just a good good dub to pick up in that whole equation of of it all. Um prior before you get, you know five of your next seven games are going to be division games. Just go ahead and steal another one. Um, and and then versus the whole – that whole thing, we'd have been, what, three and one? Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's top of the charts right there. So um, that would be that'd be a good good way to close bow tie for that whole little, you know, um, inner – whatever, I don't know what you call that, but divisional yeah. matchup for the year. Yeah. Like um, inner conference match, yeah, inner division matchup. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, like I said, those are, yeah, I mean, you said a couple different times, you said it a few times right here, um, stacking those, those are the important ones. Those are, I say you win the tiebreakers in the division, you know, things like that, um, to where I feel like, you know, I, I keep saying division, I'm not trying to get too ahead of myself, but I do feel like there is a clear path for a potential one seed if we can just handle business. Yeah. Don't see San Fran or Philly. You know, we got like this, you know, Dallas, you know, it's kind of, uh, you know, New Year's Eve, but I like where we're sitting at right now. I'm looking forward to looking forward to Sunday. It's going to be a good weekend of football. No, good weekend of football. Uh, and two of the biggest games this week, both Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. Uh, for, for our, for our, our, our teams, whether it's Michigan, whether it's this uh, Lions game, you know, we, regardless, our teams are going to be in the mix of the best football this week. Um, and, 100%. And, yeah, and I'm and I'm feeling confident in both of them. I'm feeling good. Um, yeah, no, and we'll be back at you guys next week, uh, hopefully with two dubs. And um, and I don't know, we'll see sitting two dubs, looking at Maryland in the face, and I'm not I'm not sure who the hell the Lions play after this, but Bears. Not, uh, yeah, the Bears. So yeah, to uh, but no, anything else for the people? So I got go blue. See yes, sir. Go next blue. week. Peace.